Beer number 25. 25. So. Northeast IPA, first version. And we are starting to explore the world of water chemistry. This is a new step for us. Yeah, my, my understanding of a Northeast IPA is that water chemistry is extremely important. So we, um, we have a water tester, the Smart Brew water tester, the exact eye dip. We tested our water and we came up with... We needed to add some calcium chloride and some gypsum. Some gypsum. To give it the right uh, feel. So... Oh. What are you saying? We didn't bottle it very well? We didn't bottle it very well. <laughs> so out We're of the, still working on that. Out of the keg, this was fantastic. Um, obviously, still playing with this bottle filler, trying to get it right. Apparently, that's not a skill we've developed yet. No. So... Oh, you're going to taste it right away? Well, no, I was just going to smell it. That's got a lot of smell. A lot of aroma. Very citrusy. Yeah. Which makes sense. Basing that, you know, what we did here. So, what did we do? The ingredients. Bah, bah, bah. We had <clears throat> Morris Otter. Maris Otter. Maris Otter. My, sp uh, my <laughs> apparently my <laughs> script is not fantastic. Golden Promise, some raw wheat, two row, flaked wheat, and flaked oats. We got a lot of raw stuff in there. Yeah, so, um. Well, one raw thing. So we. Yeah, so we, we, had, we did this again in the high-gravity brew-in-a-bag system. Uh, we mashed this at 149 49. degrees. So we did it an hour, and then we added 15 minutes. I assume so, that, and that was for the raw. Yeah, so 75 minutes, this mashed. Um, we did a mash at 170 degrees, and our pre-boil gravity was 1.054. Uh, we wanted 1.050, so we, we were above we were, our target. <clears throat> a little high, but that's okay. Uh, this is also the, so, yeah, this is the first time that we did a first wort hopping. So as soon as we pulled the bag out, we threw in some Columbus, we threw in Columbus and, uh, we left that in there as it came up to a boil, which my reading indicates gives you a smoother bitterness. And then we had some Centennial and some Citra at five yeah, minutes. Yeah, at five minutes. So first wort hop and then the next top editions were at the final five minutes. Um... Threw this into the fast ferment. Uh, this is like the second or third time we've used the, the plastic fermenter. Seems to work okay. But then, two days later... No. No. We, oh, we pitched the yeast. I forgot about the yeast. Pitched the yeast. So we used Escarpment <laughs> Labs Vermont Ale. Um, Escarpment Labs is a uh, yeast lab in southern Ontario here, so it's a fairly local yeast for us. Oh, I like That's that. That's big. That is a big. Got a lot of flavor. If only. It's got a bit of a bite. If only it was carbonated properly. Yeah. That's a but, good. Yeah. So. Um, finish the, finish, finishing the story. So two days after we pitched the yeast, we dry hopped with Citra and Centennial. So 28 grams of each. So that's one ounce of each as a dry hop. So not a massive dry hopping. But there's a lot of uh, citrus flavors there. So I, I get a lot of. Um, it does have a bit of a bite up front, though. Yeah. Which, if you like that, is great. And if you don't, then it, it will bite you. It's kind of bold, strong. It is bold. A lot of um, grapefruity flavors. Not as cloudy as most Northeast IPAs are. There's still a bit of cloud there, but it's not, you know, super cloudy. So if that was an issue, if we decided that was an issue, can we do the whole gelatin thing with this one as well? Or is that just... Swollen on this style. Uh, you could find it with gelatin, but then I th read that that strips out a lot of the hop flavor and aroma. So you okay. want to leave it and allow so it to be. So it's better to have it cloudy. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, so this ended up um, as a 7.3 ABV. So mm. fairly high alcohol content. Again, I think this is a uh, this is like a first beer or one beer during the evening. I don't think I could That's drink more big. than yeah. I don't think I could drink more than one of these. Hmm. But still, great first attempt. And There's I think this one. I think Not this bad. is something that I'll come back and explore a little bit more, maybe with a larger dry hop charge. What are you hoping to get from a lighter, larger dry hop? Um, more aroma with less bitterness. 
And that will also make it cloudier, which is something that some people want and other people say, no, it shouldn't be cloudy. Humans. That's okay. I'll um, drink it. Yeah, so I think I'd do the exact same, the exact same grain schedule. Mm -hmm. Same mash temperature, just change up the hops a little bit. And I'd use that Vermont ale yeast again. Okay, well, I made a note, so we're ready for version two whenever that happens. Cool.